Welcome, collectors and diecast enthusiasts. Thank you once again for joining me for this all-new edition of Diecast Emporium. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new 1 to 50 scale first gear Kenworth T880 with Century 1060 rotator wrecker. This version is in Viper Red, but just like the dump truck that was recently released by First Gear, you can also get this truck in Surf Blue, White, or Black. The item number is 50-3465, and at the time of this review's publication, the model MSRP was just shy of $120 at $119.95. Okay, let's take a look at the packaging first before we get into this exciting model. 150th scale diecast replica, the first gear, gear logo at the front and center located here. This is an adult collectible scale model, so these are not intended for anyone under the minimum age of 14. Here's what the top of the box looks like, 150th scale die-cast replica. Obviously, this is a clear window-style packaging, so you can see what's inside. Here is the honor number sticker on the right side flap. There's nothing on the back of the model's box, which is a bit of a disappointment because this could have been used to have some information about the real Kenworth T880 or the real Century 1060 rotator. Underneath... You can see where I acquired my model from, and that's my friends at the Construction Diecast store, constructiondiecast.com. There's their website and phone number. And over here, here is First Gear's information, such as their website and their phone number, as well as all their different social media platforms. Okay, let's begin the unboxing. All you need to do is open up one of the end flaps. The model is housed in two plastic formers. However, also included, that you'll see in just a moment here, is the winch key that's used to operate the winch on the truck, and it has Miller Industries on it right here. And also there is an instructional sheet of paper, which again goes about telling you how to unbox the model properly and how to set it up so that you can use your rotator effectively. So take the first part of the plastic former off. Be careful what you grab onto because this is a delicate model with some breakable parts. Lift your truck straight out of the box. Now, initially, you will have to do some more removal of packaging pieces. There's a rubber band around the top portion of the rotator. And as you can see right here, there's also a plastic former underneath the rotator's winches, which you just carefully have to take out. And once you've done that, you are ready to display your wrecker. Okay, before we get into the model, here is the provided instructional sheet. It actually shows all 10 steps. Here's how you would unwind the cable, extend the boom, retract the cables, center the winch on the back, extend your front outriggers on both sides, your rear underlift, your rear outrigger over here, your rear outrigger at the back, and your rear underlift. So that is your instructional sheet. Very nice that First Gear has provided that, especially for newcomers to rotator models. Gives them a good starting point on how to operate all of the key features on the actual rotator's body. All right, back to the model. Let's start out with the details and decals on the truck, and then we'll get into functionality. As you can see, Century is, is applied very crisply on the boom in black. You have Century over here right above one of the outriggers. Chrome is used appropriately all throughout this truck, particularly on the wheel hubs, on your exhaust, on your visor, and on the Kenworth grille and front bumper. Coming along over here, again, you can see that the cab is detailed inside the truck, but it is hard to pick up on camera, but it's worthwhile looking when you get yours because they've replicated it quite realistically. Here is your main working or warning light, again, which is a clear plastic piece. Moving towards the back of the truck, you have additional features such as your lights here, which again are done by decal application. They are not functional. Looking underneath the truck, you can see all of the various different axles, including your lift or drop axle, your front steer axle. And if you look closely, there are different tread patterns on all of the different axles, whether they are driven or not. Okay, let's start out with functionality. First thing that you'll notice is the truck does have an opening hood. Should you want to pose a wrecker, getting some service done to it by another wrecker. How ironic would that be, but it does happen. So there's your motor and components inside. This model does not feature an opening door on either side, but as I mentioned before, it does have an accurately represented detailed interior. Also, as I've said before, the chrome pieces, I think, 
look really good all throughout. That's not necessarily a functionality aspect, but I just think it looks really, really good. Okay, so here's your steering, which works quite well. You can achieve a very aggressive angle in either direction. And as you can see, you do have a working lift or drop axle here as well. Now, let's get the truck set up as if it's on a scene for a recovery. Let's get our outriggers out on both sides. Make sure you extend them out to their full length. So these are now out and deployed. We have to put our back ones down too. So these drop down by simply push, pushing down on them, pulling down on them, but be careful, and then pulling out your outriggers here and here. So there you go, down and down. Now, We've got the truck basically set up and ready to operate, but we still want to put our underlift down too. That adds additional flexibility and stability to the truck. So now your Century Rotator is set up and ready to do its recovery operation. Now there are actually three different winches that are functional on this truck. You have your left winch over here and your right winch over here, and there's also a small recovery winch underneath. That one is also functional. But to operate the main winches, you will need the Miller Industries key seen here. What you want to do is take one hand and pull lightly down on each side and then give yourself some slack by putting the key in and then turning. So we'll do that here. There we go. So now we'll pull down, give ourselves a little bit of slack. We're going to have to do the same thing on the other side as well. So we'll give us plenty of slack down here. And make sure you pull it all the way out. Do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you don't get your winches tangled up. That would be a problem. Let's give ourselves some more slack. Now, the third winch, you don't need to use the key. There's actually a hand crank right here. Again, not sure how well that's come across on camera, but you simply wind and unwind by spinning the dial. Not going to pay too much attention on that during this video because it's very self-explanatory. Okay, we've given ourselves some slack on both winch lines, the left and the right side. Now let's raise our boom up. There we go, we've got our boom up. And the model features different boom extensions too. So now that we've given us some slack, let's extend this out. There's one, and here's our second one. Now that's not full extension, that's not as far as it can go, but I just wanted to give you guys a look at how it works so that you can get a pretty aggressive and tall recovery angle if you wanted to show this truck recovering a flipped over semi truck or piece of heavy equipment or whatever you're using this vehicle for. Additionally, you can spin this 360 degrees because it is a rotator after all. There you go. Spin this all around. All right, now, We've made our recovery. Let's turn things back the other way. So let's put this down a little bit more, extend our boom down, and now we've got to wind in our winch lines. So we're gonna spin this the other way. As you can see, it's now coming in. I like to give myself just a little bit of slack on here so that again, it doesn't get all tightly wound. So that's that side done. Let's come back around to the other side now. On the left-hand side. Again, make sure you pull your line out. It'll work, work a lot better when you're using the key. And then again, turn it to the left to bring your line in. I'm trying to do this without my hand in the way. And that's essentially the main rotator functionality and how you operate it. Now, I haven't spent a whole lot of time testing out different weights on this. Now, I'm sure if you had a plastic 150th scale um, backhoe loader or, you know, a smaller piece of equipment and you wanted to rig your own recovery setup here, perhaps using some thick ribbon that you might be able to find at a hobby store, I'm sure these winch lines would probably actually hold that. And that's something maybe I can do in some pictures on Instagram when I get a little bit more time because the mechanism on here is pretty strong. I'm actually quite pleased with it. So we've got our winch lines in. Let's lower this back down. We'll pick up our underlift, 
put him back in the transport position. We got to raise our outriggers now because we're headed back out on the road. Clip those up, bring them in. Do the same thing on both sides. There you go. You're all set. And now you're ready to drive off to your next recovery. Overall, the first gear 1 to 50 scale Kenworth T880 with Century 1060 rotator wrecker is really quite an intriguing and interesting 150 scale model. I think I would highly recommend this piece to anybody that has a 150 scale truck or construction collection. You can definitely have this in a diorama with it recovering a rolled over semi or perhaps a piece of heavy equipment that might have fallen off a trailer. And for the most part, all of the functionality and model engineering works particularly well on mine. I have to give it two thumbs way up. As always, I've got this first gear products from my friends at the Construction Diecast store. There will be a link down in the video's description. So if you want to add one of these to your collection or one of the other rotators in the three other colors, I would recommend you buy it from there. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a Merry Christmas. Take care. I'll see you in the next review.